<laughs> uh, we could bring out the black book yet. <laughs> Hi there. Hello again and welcome once again to Cast Iron Wednesday. This is a uh, weekly uh, YouTube live uh, where we talk about what else? Cast Iron. And again, credit for this goes to all of those uh, YouTube channels that uh, do this every Wednesday. Uh, we, are see we see a lot of videos for Cast Iron Wednesday where people uh, cook stuff in cast iron. And of course, that's the best reason to, uh, you know, to uh, do something like that here on YouTube. Besides, these are a lot of fun and I very much enjoy uh, seeing everybody showing up. Looks like a couple of people have shown up already. <laughs> this could turn into a debate. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, because uh, tonight we are talking about one of those never ending uh, subjects of debate or argument in cast iron, um, which is almost as bad is gun control. And that, of course, would be smooth cast iron versus rough cast iron. Which is better? Uh, the answer to that is they are different. Not necessarily one is better than the other. And it looks like the cat got out again. <laughs> well, I'll try. I'm, I'll do my best to make sure he doesn't uh, interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, this is one of those uh, subjects here, probably even more than sugar in cornbread, probably even more than beans in chili. It's the question of rough versus smooth. There are, of course, many videos on YouTube which do show uh, cooking in a uh, rough cast iron pan, which really demonstrates the truth is that, yes, you can cook nonstick in a uh, cast iron pan. Um, it's also true that a smooth pan is a little bit better. Um, not enough where I'm going to throw away my lodge, my uh, modern lodge cast iron pans. I enjoy them. I love cooking in them, and I will cook anything in my uh, modern lodge pans given the opportunity. Um, it is true that it does feel very nice to slide your uh, spatula across a, a uh, glass smooth cast iron surface. It really feels nice. And that is likely why they have been uh, smoothing out uh, cast iron all of these years. Um, and let's get started on something so that I don't just uh, talk everybody to death. For starters, well, um, <clears throat> that means, of course, what we're doing tonight is breakfast for dinner. Because it seems like every time we uh, have to uh, test these uh, modern cast iron pans for smoothness, we always end up cooking breakfast. Eggs, pancakes, bacon, and that's pretty much what we're doing here. So, here we go again. Let's uh, move our uh, perspective over again. Here comes a little roller coaster that uh, I know everybody just loves. And again, that's what I get for doing this on next to no budget here. So I appreciate, as always, everybody's patience. Oh, yeah, and here are the pans in question. Um, over here on the right is the Blacklock skillet. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Over here on the right is the uh, Stargazer skillet, which I have out kind of like as an, an example where it may be a cast iron pan that might actually be too smooth because a lot of people say that they have trouble seasoning a uh, Stargazer. There are those who can do it. On the other hand, right here in this corner, we have a modern lodge. Oh, got a, uh, of course, I forgot something. Namely, I forgot a pot holder because, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hot. Uh, we have a modern lodge uh, cast iron pan. This actually is only about two years old. This one is a Cracker Barrel one, which, uh, as it says here, the Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. Um, yeah, it comes from Cracker Barrel. It's made by Lodge for Cracker Barrel. Still has the Lodge logo on it. And definitely has that rough surface that Lodge cast iron pans are known for and which people claim is the reason not to buy Lodge. As you can see, I, have, I pay no attention to that, and I own quite a few Lodge cast iron pans. Meanwhile, in the back here is our, uh, I don't know if you can call it the Challenger, since it's been around for a lot longer, and in fact, this one, it, uh, probably the Lodge is the Challenger, but in the back here, we once again have a Birmingham Stove and Range Red Mountain Number no. 8 uh, pan, so this dates likely, I'm thinking, to about the 1940s or so. Could be as late as the 1960s. And this definitely has what BSR was known for in its heyday. A uh, nice glass smooth surface that I've cooked on many times. And so it, uh, I have admittedly built up a little bit of seasoning on this as well. 
So there we go. Okay. And let me turn the perspective over to a little bit of prep work, but not much. I promise this won't, this will not take too long. Uh, da, 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 let's say right about here. That sounds good. And let's hi, say hi to everyone too. Hello, Jessica T, Sergeant Spork, Bookworm73, Paw Paw Dan, Raymond, and, and John, no, William Hurt. Um, John, even though the older pans are great too, I believe my modern rough lodge holds the seasoning better. Yeah, that is one thing. And, and I do want to tell you a little bit about that, how lodge actually did design the surface of its modern pans, especially to hold the seasoning better. Um, nah, Scott McIver, nah, it's such a microscopic layer that beyond the rough surface, we can see they all cook the same if your process is right. Well, yeah, I think you could say that. Never had any issues with my modern pans. Great pans they are. And again, I will not disagree with that as much as I love cooking in my BSR and even in the Stargazer. Thank you very much for the shared information. Gives me the learning curve to move forward. I'm stuck in the pre-50s. Prefer the 1800s. <laughs> well, if you have some um, 1800s at Cast Iron Pans, use them with pride. I can definitely say that. Meanwhile, I've got a quick late throw together a little bit of of uh, pancake batter here because, yeah, I know, um, why not use store-bought uh, pancake batter? Because this is so easy. And, uh, and besides, it's better than store-bought. So we've got, okay, I've got uh, two cups of flour here. And to that, we will be doing three tablespoons of sugar. By the way, that is just regular all-purpose flour. Nothing special about that. I buy my flour on the cheap, and I've never had a problem with it. One, two, three. And then from there, we do about half a teaspoon of salt. Even though my uh, counter is a little crowded, I try to get as much prep in as possible so I don't have to run away, uh, run all over the place. But on the other hand, I'm hoping folks don't mind seeing um, preparing this uh, pancake uh, better from scratch here. Uh, one tablespoon of baking powder. And uh, ta -ta -ta here we go. There we go, nice and quick. I'm just trying to do this as fast as I can here. And from here, um, okay, I'm here's where I forgot to uh, pre-crack the eggs. So let's do this as quickly as we can. Two eggs beaten. So let's beat the eggs. One. And two, I always buy brown eggs if possible because you know what they say, brown eggs are local eggs and local eggs are fresh. I have no interest whatsoever in so-called free range eggs. I mean, yeah, I know it gives you a nice politically correct feeling and that's a debate that will happen not here, but somewhere else. I'm not interested in that. So we got to quickly beat ourselves up some eggs here. Really nothing to it. And voila, two eggs. And then from there, uh, we've got, well, this I did do in advance at least. I melted some butter. Who remembers to melt the butter in advance? For once we did, and not only did we melt in the butter, let me make sure I don't spill it. I use a little cast iron ashtray skillet for it. So if you wonder what uh, these little ashtray skillets are good for, there you go. It's the world's best butter melter. And no, no question about it. In fact, if you notice, it says Birmingham stove and range. <laughs> that helps keep up the seasoning on, on that. So from there, oh yeah, I did let, I actually did melt that butter early enough to cool it. And now we get the eggs butter. Okay, so at this point, all we have to do is uh, add in our milk. About, it says 
about one and three quarters cups of milk, plus a little bit more if needed, which it's you, which we probably will need because it's the middle of winter, and so it's a very dry environment in here. So to be sure we have enough liquid, I will go with what they say about one and three quarters cups of milk. And we will add more as needed. But anyway, that's really how easy it is to make a homemade pancake batter. So as I said, I mean, as much as I enjoy Bisquick and everybody else, I mean, really, it's really not that hard to put together a nice homemade uh, pancake batter. And then you can say things, of course, like how it's, um, you know, it doesn't have any chemicals in it, which is another debate we won't get into, but it definitely, we can say that because it is uh, just these basic ingredients, this is definitely better than the stuff we get at the store. Yeah, see, um, this is uh, nice and thick right now, but I think I might want to thin it out only a little bit more. So, just throw in a tad bit more milk, and then we will finally be ready to make ourselves some pancakes. And as I mentioned, yeah, well, okay, yeah, I'll talk about the lodge skillet when we make a pancake in it, because the lodge skillet will come first, and then we can go from there. That's pretty good now, so now it's definitely runny. Which means we get to change our perspective over a little bit. And there we go. Okay. Hey, what do we have here? I tend to use my single notch lodge pans the most. They're milled nicely, a little thicker on the bottom, have good heat retention. Yeah, that's always been the best thing about, uh, about lodge. Um, so you almost clarified the butter. Smooth. <laughs> Well, that's how it turned out. Just that's because I didn't melt it in the microwave, I guess. Um, nothing wrong with microwaves. It only just it melts it fast. In this way, um, again, it, it's uh, a lot, you know, you can take your time. And I have had butter explode in the microwave too, which is not fun. So let's get down to, uh, get down to business here. For the record, I have the, uh, Stove top uh, set. Uh, let's try to get one great perspective here. I'm not sure if I can. Uh, as you can see, I had the stove top set at just about four uh, on the uh, on there, so that hopefully these um, that should not be uh, hot enough to burn these. And remember, it is still cast iron, so it should still be hot enough to make this butter sizzle. Actually, I got to move this over a little bit. Sorry. There we go. Uh, finally. Yeah, the sound of metal scraping on metal. That's always fun. But nonetheless, there we go. Now we just take ourselves a quarter cup of the uh, batter. And away we go. And, uh, yeah, as I've said enough times, I am self-taught as far as uh, pretty much everything is cooking in cooking is concerned. And that includes making pancakes. So, yeah, just, make, just being able to make my first pancakes, that alone was uh, pretty exciting. And I'm very pleased uh, with how, with, um, with that. I mean, it's really simple. You just simply let them sit until the small bubbles on the top start to turn into large bubbles. And then we flip. So, better dig out my spatula right now. Uh, maybe. Uh, this may be too big, in fact. So I guess I'll have to. I guess I'll have to go with this one. All right. While we are waiting, as you can see, we're starting to get the first small bubbles at this point 
Yes, I never understood the ready-made mixes. It really isn't hard to just make it yourself. I like making mine with buttermilk. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I should have thrown in a little uh, buttermilk uh, powder in with this. We make a big batch of homemade mix and then just use what we need each time. Yeah, I Exploding butter. Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, because then you got to clean out the microwave too. I've never uh, actually had American-style pancakes. They are worth making. Um, yeah, not everything in the USA is stolen from other countries. <laughs> <laughs> I freely admit a lot of it is, uh, as far as recipes are concerned. But American-style pancakes, as you can see, are simple, easy, and delicious. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me see. We still have the uh, small uh, bubbles right now. At this point, I'd say we'll be ready to flip in about a minute or so. First waffle never turns out either. Well, there is that, too. So this first one may be undercooked or it might be overcooked. Um, well, we will only see what happens when we do the flip. <laughs> but yeah, that's why even now I have not yet had the courage to try using a waffle iron. I have yet to make waffles because um, even though I know enough tricks about cast iron that uh, it should be nonstick because again, you just have to heat it just right. I've still been nervous about actually uh, making waffles. <laughs> a nice Pyrish, um, oh, pir yes, Amish, Amish butter. Yeah, that I, I admit I'm also proud of. I did, it, you know, um, several years ago, I uh, managed to uh, acquire a number of these. So I'm uh, quite happy with that. And I think we are probably already getting to the point um, where we are almost ready to flip. I mean, I can see we've got these uh, little small bubbles right now, um, maybe about another 20 seconds or so. Making pancakes and cast iron is the best way to get those slightly crispy edges that are my favorite. <laughs> First one doesn't turn out of the pan hot enough. Mine always turn out fine. Yeah, that's the risk of it. Okay, I think we're starting to get a big bubble here. So, here goes nothing. Not bad. It might indeed be a little undercooked, perhaps. But we are off to a good start. Maybe I will turn up the heat only slightly. So now, instead of four, I'm probably at four and a half. And now, of course, we just have to wait for it to be done and make sure that the inside is not liquid. <laughs> and there is our first pancake. Then after that, I think we will uh, move over and do the uh, BSR in the next one. By the way, you notice, um, by the way, it didn't stick, did it? I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> Maybe I'm just used to this. But after all, this is a rough, large, modern-day large cast iron pan, and that doesn't look like it's stuck, did it? So I'd say we are uh, off to a pretty good start already. And yeah, even on the cast iron cooking group, I mean, of course, you know, we have our FAQ frequently asked questions, and that's always one of the one of the most common ones. It's like, how do I keep food from sticking in my cast iron pan, whether it's rough or smooth? If you overheat it, especially if you're doing breakfast, if you overheat it, it will stick. That's why, again, we are doing a low and slow here. Oh, yeah, I can see there's this nice big gap or whatever it is uh, there in the pancake. Nonetheless, this is definitely not sticking, as you can see. We have no problem at all as far as sticking is concerned. And I did not use a, a ton of butter either. Did not use a lot of butter, so we are doing pretty good here. I could probably flip it and then flip it again if it seems underdone, especially since this first side is uh, not is maybe a wee bit undercooked anyway. Oh, yeah, and besides, that looked like it turned out well. Might have even turned out better than the first side. So we will just wait not very long either. And I'd say we have our first pancake. Hmm. Nice and looks nice and fluffy. Uh, we are off to a pretty good start here. Uh, Ray Laws. Also, cast iron cookware helps with anyone that might be iron poor. Uh, my doctor told me to think about cooking with cast iron. Um, and not no more. I only use cast iron. Um, uh, from what I understand, the amount of, of iron that is actually leached into your food, well, number one, it depends on how much, on what you're cooking. But also, I mean, consider as well, you've got a layer of seasoning on the pan so that the amount of iron that's actually leached into the food really is trace 
is just barely a trace or maybe microscopic. I mean, there really isn't that much of a, of a difference as far as that's concerned. I mean, granted, if you use tomato sauce, you will get a lot more iron in it. And there are a lot of people who will disagree. There will be people who say, I, I'm anemic. I only cook in cast iron, and it has helped me a great deal. And I am no professional. I'm no doctor or scientist, so I'm not going to argue over that. I can only say, well, again, what I've read, which is just that, that the actual amount of iron is probably very small. And uh, JD Hive 4, I read somewhere that the iron can't, uh, in cast iron cookware is not bioavailable, so you don't really get anything. Well, that's one thing. And here again, I will dis some of these. Oh, look at that. I think we've got our first uh, pancake. Uh, let me pull it in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let me show off another little uh, vintage uh, here thing here. So, yeah, I like the uh, vintage stuff. What can I say? And I especially enjoy flea market discoveries like this. So, anyway, here's our first pancake. And now we will change sides as best we can. This second over here. This. And then that, and then the other thing. Ugh. I've been preheating the uh, BSR for a while as well, so it's also uh, at, uh, should be also at the right temperature. Um, okay, we will get this, and then I will continue what I was about to say. So we just mix this up a little bit. Oh, wait a second. Duh, butter. My bad. <laughs> I'm not thinking as usual. It's like... Um, I don't know. It's like I get this tunnel vision here doing these things. Well, at least that means I'm not, um, you know, getting all tense and nervous now. So, and as you can see, I'm really not even using a lot of butter, am I? Um, I, I hardly doubt that's more than a couple of teaspoons of butter here. Boy, it looks like this butter is actually browning very quickly, though. It's almost as if the BSR really uh, has a, a good construction to it. <laughs> okay, now... We once again take about a quarter cup, and there we go. And it's really that easy. So, quite frankly, if you have never made homemade pancakes, as you can see, I highly encourage you to do so, especially if you have a cast iron pan. Uh, what was I saying? Um, oh, yeah, the iron is not bioavailable. Okay, here is where I'm going to disagree with a number of these so-called healthy uh, websites and, and actually call BS on this. There is no such thing as organic iron and inorganic iron or bioavailable iron or not bioavailable iron. Iron is an element, and that's pretty much it. It doesn't matter if you get it from a, a cast iron pan or from pills or from uh, um, whatever foods you're eating, or whether it's you know vegetables or meat or wherever. It's iron. That's basically it. And yes, there are iron compounds as well, which can, which your body can absorb as well. But this, quite frankly, is cast iron. It is not any kind of organic or anything. It's just basic, your basic element of iron. And that's what you absorb, um, whether or not it's in uh, trace amounts, that's what you absorb with, uh, with, um, when you cook, when you cook in it. So I will indeed call that one as woo. And please, that's not meant as an offense to you personally. I'm, it's more, uh, I am directing that more towards the sources who claim that there's such a thing as organic iron. <laughs> I use cast all the time and have never had low iron in the blood. And hey, there you go, Val's cat, black cat's rule. Hom, homestead hobby farm. My sister is anemic and has low iron. My mom cooks in cast iron and helps raise her iron to help raise her iron level. She said that she doesn't feel a difference, but every little bit helps. That's yeah, that's just it. And again, I am not disagreeing with the ones who say that cooking in cast iron has a remarkable uh, difference. There could be other factors. There could even be the placebo effect, perhaps. Um, again, I am no scientist. Um, oh, but it looks like we're already almost getting to the point to where we can flip this. 
<laughs> so uh, that's one reason why, again, on the Cast Iron Cooking Group, we have a rule especially to keep these kind of arguments out of the group. <laughs> here tonight, I'm encouraging it because, remember, the subject here is supposed to be uh, smooth versus non smooth versus rough, although really the argument, again, is pretty mood, I would say, wouldn't you? I mean, actually, we've got, it looks like we're building up a nice uh, crust on this already. So we are probably, no, we've, actually, is it just me or do these bubbles seem a little bit more pronounced on the BSR than on the Lodge? Maybe I've got it on a uh, higher heat now, and that may be very well the reason why. I mean, both Lodge and BSR, they're both pretty thick cast iron, and they weigh fairly similar. Um, you can argue maybe they were designed differently. Um, but yeah, I'd say we're definitely at the point here to flip. So once again, boom. Oh yeah, this is definitely, in fact, I may have only just very slightly overdone it. So I would have to say that this probably uh, might have actually been a wee bit too hot. So, uh, so this is almost... Yeah, um, yeah, just barely <laughs> overdone on the bottom, so I better watch the top. <laughs> uh, cook your steak in the cast. There is no other way to cook steak, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, whether I mean whether or not you have a grill, even I'm cooking a steak is one of the few things. Yeah, hi and yeah. Uh, well, this one here I may have just barely overdone. On the, no, yeah. On the other hand, this one turned out very nice. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah. So what we're do doing good. Think? Yeah. Doing my best to keep an eye on this. <laughs> and yeah, there are other differences as well between BSR and Lodge. I mean, not the fact, besides the fact that this thing is like, uh, who knows, um, as I said, it's could date to the 1940s. Oh, I better not touch it yet. I don't think it's quite ready. Um, I love, I love crispy cakes goes best with butter. <laughs> I like the smooth piece of cast iron that I inherited from my grandmother. Yeah, I guess that's the thing I should say again, sliding your pan across a very smooth cast iron surface as opposed to a rough cast iron surface. Yes, there is a difference there, especially so I can be sure. Oh yeah, this is a uh, practic. This is pretty much done already. And that didn't take long at all, did it? So, okay, having done that, anyway, we've got uh, two pancakes. One, yeah, as, as we said already, the first pancake does, is a little, it never seems to come out uh, quite right. So I think we will do one more, and then we will move on to the next thing and make some bacon. For the time being, the BSR is going to uh, go take a rest here. And we're going to bring the lodge back out. We will try one more pancake on that. And meanwhile, it's also time for another smooth cast iron pan, and that would be the Stargazer. So, yeah, lodge has got some competition here tonight. Um, okay, we will once again get a little bit of butter in. And I better be careful not to burn this one because I think it's definitely gotten a little bit hotter here. So, but as you can see, we're still not using a lot of butter here. This does, I mean, it does not take a lot of butter to cook a pancake. Of course, again, I'm doing this, take, taking my time here and cooking them one at a time. If you've got three or four kids, I mean, I know how hard it is to try to cook pancakes one at a time. That's one reason to why a big family needs a big cast iron pan. So here we go again, the third and the last pancake. Coming up. There we go. Nice and simple, too. This is very easy, very calming, too. I, I mean, it's especially because it's so easy. <laughs> I keep getting cutouts dropping. Oh, dropping the connection. Oh, here we go again. Why does this seem to happen every time? Uh, the best I could say is I definitely have an Ethernet connection going here. Um, but again, I'm hoping the sound doesn't cut out the way it, it did last time. Uh, the right temperature in butter, nothing will stick. Definitely smooth or rough. And that's really the whole point here. And that's why I'm doing another one here in the so-called rough large cast iron pan. 
Um, I was saying something about Lodge. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, okay, I've been uh, doing some research, for whatever that's worth, trying to really get to get down to the story of why modern-day cast iron is rough. Uh, on one hand, as a lot of people say, this all started like back in the 60s or so when the uh, when the uh, cast iron makers were starting to run into financial problems. And at first, as best as I could tell, it was indeed a cost cutting measure when they first stopped grinding and smoothing down the insides of their pans and making them rough. Uh, that was how it started with Lodge and also with BSR. It's, um, I have the word from former BSR employees. There are still some of them on Facebook some uh, who actually work there in BSR and can confirm things like this. For a while, BSR actually would charge more for their smooth, polished skillets. And the uh, rough, unpolished skillets were sold at a uh, lower price. So, I mean, after all, they were a business. They knew what they were doing here. I'm keeping an eye on this. And again, just like before with the Lodge, it seems like these uh, bubbles are not quite as prominent as they were in the BSR. But anyway, that was then, and again, you do you can find a lot of uh, mo a later BSR Century series pans. You know the ones that have a Made in USA mark, and they had the the BSR mark of no, of N O period number six or seven or eight or ten. And um, they do actually have a rough surface, even rougher than the modern day Lodge pans. Uh, on the other hand. As uh, those who follow Lodge, we're almost at the point of flip. As those who follow Lodge know, and Lodge has said this many times as well, is that their surface here is deliberately designed like this. And yes, they in fact do smooth the surface of their cast iron pans, and they have been for at least the past 10 to 20 years. And no, they do not simply grind it like they used to do in the old days. Rather, they have a new method now that uh, in that, um, I better flip this before I talk too much because I can see we are at that point. You know, the uh, the surface is getting a little bit of a skin on it as well as those. Uh, oh, yeah. See how easy that is? Boom. Oh, yeah. In fact, I think this one is uh, nice and perfect as well. Boy, it's as though these pancakes are turning out better in the Lodge than they than they were in the BSR. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Lodge actually developed this uh, method of uh, smoothing out their pans in that they do it deliberately to have much more... Uh, I couldn't, shouldn't say a rough surface, but much, many more edges and, and um, divots and what's the word? Wrinkles, I guess, in the surface, especially so that their seasoning will stick better to the pan so that they can rapidly spray coats of seasoning off over many pans at once. And they do this now in that after the uh, pan comes out of the uh, mold and is initially ground down and, you know, just polished, you know, just enough to uh, have the right shape, things like removing the gate mark and so forth, where it still has a rough sandpaper surface to it. They then put it in the centrifuge they have in which uh, hundreds or even thousands of really heavy UFO shaped ball bearings are dumped over the pan and the pan is submerged in it and it is very rapidly vibrated. It's uh, on a very rapid vibrating surface so that all of those ball bearings pound down and beat down on the surface of the pan and that does smooth out the really rough edges. So the end result is a, is a large cast iron pan that is actually smoother than those other Asian-made pans that you can find at Walmart and the like. And if you've ever run your surface over, say, for instance, one of those emerald pans um, at, bed, at Bed Bugs and Beyond, for instance, and compared it to a lodge, you can see, yes, there is a real difference. And I'd say we are uh, just about done once again. So we've got three nice pancakes here. So there is a good start. Anyway, I mean, really, the whole rough versus uh, smooth cast iron, I mean, yeah, okay, it's kind of like clickbait to get everybody to join, and I'm really, really glad that everybody's showed up, but, uh, but again, we... All of us here, we know the truth in that as far as cooking is concerned, yes, you can cook just fine on a modern-day cast iron pan. 
having said that, let's change things around a little bit again. Put our lodge here in the background. And let's bring out our next guest, which again is the Stargazer, a cast iron skillet. Ugh, a little awkward here. Okay, now for this, okay, I'm still got the pan heated up at about the same because now we're going to uh, start pulling for the next uh, bit. Let me move this pancake batter out of the way right now. Okay, I uh, gotta put it somewhere safe. I guess I'll have to put it over here right now. Anyway, where was I? Uh, while we're waiting, yeah, Red Dog, there's a custom cast iron company that will make your own cast iron uh, name that uses brake calipers. Uh, 18th Street? I've never heard of that one. Uh, you might want to send a link so that we can take a look at it. Uh, so many delicious maple syrups. Uh, I thought about bringing a cheaper piece of my cast iron to a machine shop to have it sanded down a little smoother just to see how it cooks afterwards. And, well, the short answer is it's your cast iron, and yes, feel free to do what you like with it. So uh, I don't see any reason not to. However, let's see. Let's keep going here. Um, I don't think I interrupted my train of thought because I think I said already how uh, Lodge, what Lodge Cast Iron does to smooth out their pans. Um, so that the end result, again, they do this especially so that their uh, seasoning will stick quickly and easily to the pan. It's generally considered among cast iron users, especially on the internet, that Lodge's seasoning is mediocre at best, in that it's good enough for you to take home and start cooking on, and that's really the whole point. That, quite frankly, was what saved Lodge from bankruptcy, that they, uh, that they did that, and it really caught on with the public. Um, but nonetheless, the seasoning in Lodge Cast Iron is so-so. Uh, and anyway, what can you say now but bacon? So, with our uh, stargazer here, let us fry some bacon. As soon as I can separate these pieces, that is. Here we go. Notice I just put it right on a bare, unseasoned, or unoiled pan. Just to see what happens. Will it stick? I mean, after all, I do not have it at a uh, very high temperature here. So, while we are waiting... Uh, yo, is carbon steel talk allowed here? Carbon steel is very similar to cast iron. If you love cast iron, you owe it to yourself to try carbon steel. Yes, I have tried carbon steel. I found a uh, large carbon steel pan at a uh, thrift shop once several years ago, and I did try it, and it was a lot of fun to use. And I really have no complaints about uh, using carbon steel. Where the heck did my tongues go? Here they are. Um... Carbon steel versus cast iron, I guess it's hard to say. Okay, well, let me see. It looks like at first, since I used an un-greased surface, this bacon stuck, but only just a little bit. I mean, as you can see, it easily unsticks, and then now that we've done that, we've got no problem uh, moving it around here. Oh, it's actually stuck at this point. Oh, well. That's not so bad. There we go. However, now that we've done that, I know there's not going to be any problem at all with sticking here. And again, that's because I deliberately placed it on a uh, ungreased cast iron surface. Even so, again, I only have the uh, temperature right now at just above 4 uh, on the stove top. If you go back to the beginning of this uh, live video, you should, I did show you a shot of it there. And now that I've done this, it is sliding around this pan with no problem at all. I guess we're not ready to flip yet. You know, arguably. But we do still have a little ways to go here. No question about that. <laughs> uh, I like to say how Jamaican is the perfect language. Because beer can and bacon are pronounced the same way. Beer can! And no, please don't accuse me of racism with that. All right, 
Anyway, this bacon is actually shrinking up pretty quickly. So while we're waiting here, we've got, is there any way I can send one to you? I have 70. Um, I'm not sure I need another skillet. That's the thing. Um, so as tempted as I am, I might actually suggest we offer it to maybe another another person here. So I am I am good, actually. Uh, it's like I have actually said enough times that I really have enough uh, skillets in my collection and that I would really have a hard time getting use out of another one. So I know it's also been said that I could get accept these offers for uh, cast iron or carbon steel, do an unboxing video, and uh, then just uh, give it away. Um, I am still hesitant to do so. But again, maybe that's just me. Anyway, this bacon is not taking long at all, is it? Now that we've done that, we've got a nice amount of grease here, which is good because that means we will be able to uh, bring in some eggs after this. And that's the next thing I want to do, put together a nice omelet while we still have time. We're already 40 minutes into this, and so far all we've made are pancakes and a little bit of bacon. I really want to try to get some eggs in as well. So, However, this bacon is, oh, there we go. Now it's starting to change to the right color. That's the way we want to see it. From the looks of this, I'd say probably in a couple of minutes, this bacon will be ready. Anyway, Ozark Trail at Walmart was the cheapest uh, I found, but you need to look for defects and sand down the cooking surface. <laughs> Wife loves the 15-inch uh, skillet. Oh, yeah. I definitely recommend getting at least one really big cast iron pan. You'd be surprised how many uses you can uh, get for that. Never throw away the grease. Oh, definitely. Yeah, no. That's why, as I said, this uh, bake, uh, what we're going to do now is use this uh, bacon grease and uh, make an omelet. The stargazer is amazing. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, I do very much enjoy the stargazer. As I said, the one problem I've had with it is that, like a lot of people, if you look online for stargazer, a lot of people tend to complain, and I'm not really complaining, just stating that because the stargazer is so incredibly smooth, you have some trouble actually getting the seasoning to stick which comes back to what Lodge did with their cast iron pans. And that's why Lodge is only producing cast iron pans with that so-called rough surface, even on their Elite Black Lock series. And I, for one, don't have a problem with that because, as I said in the beginning, there is, I mean, smooth is not better than rough. It is different. But, of course, again, you have a much greater appeal with smooth because it has a really lovely feel to it as well as a really beautiful look to it. And that is likely the main reason why all of these elite cast iron makers such as uh, Stargazer or Butter Pat or Field or Smithy or who knows how many, why all of these ones are grinding down their pans to a mirror smooth finish. They do certainly look very, very attractive, and people would be more willing to buy them that way. But I'd say Lodge is doing pretty good nonetheless. If I sound like an apologist for Lodge, it's only because Lodge gets a lot of abuse online and elsewhere. A lot of that abuse, I feel, is unfair, especially since they're a really good company. I have uh, dealt with them in person, and I'm very glad to support them for that reason. I mean, if they were a terrible company then I would not be so willing to uh, defend them. But they're not. They are great. And as such, I am very much a satisfied customer of Lodge Cast Iron. And no, they did not pay me to say that. And no, they did not send me a free cast iron pan for that. <laughs> okay, having said that, uh, Cynthia again, honky, would love to have one. My, hu my husband has hemochromatosis and had to leave my cast iron behind. Well, um, carbon steel is not really that much different from cast iron in, um, in its content. My understanding is it actually has either a higher, yeah, I believe that's why they call it carbon steel. It has a higher carbon content 
than cast iron. And that's practically the only difference between that and uh, cast iron, which is one reason why the properties are between cast iron and uh, carbon steel are very similar. Okay, yeah, I'd say this is getting to look like some done bacon. So, and where did I put that? Uh, all right, here we are. We've got a couple pieces of bacon here. Yum, bacon. <laughs> and now that we've done that, we get to have some fun. And let's uh, see how well this will make ourselves. Oh, man, this is smoking here in the back. I better turn this down, in fact. My bad. Okay, uh, we got ourselves, uh, let's quickly, I want, I always forget something, and in this case, I forgot the bowls. So, I guess we'll have to live with this. And we've got three eggs here. One. Two. And three. I'm tossing the shells in the sink because why not? All right, now we start whipping it up again. And as everybody knows, the real trick here for beating an egg is to add just a few drops of water to loosen it. So, that's all we need. I just literally barely turned on the sink and then turned it back off. And that's about it. So now, let me first, oh yeah, nice thing about the stargazer. Uh, well, even even here you can feel the heat, but it's not burning my hand. Okay, spread this out a little bit and Okay Oh Hope there isn't too much grease in here in fact Nonetheless that should make this even easier to flip, which also reminds me, I, where did I put my, here it is. An omelet, you need a silicone spatula. And yeah, my, also my stove does not heat quite evenly. This side here, as you can see, is going very quickly. Just Barely, just barely spread it around, but not much. Anyway, we've got a cup. We've got a minute or so. Uh, my wife uses a little sour cream in them. They are fluffy. <laughs> for some reason, this egg beating sound gets to me. Well, we're done with that for now. <laughs> I don't care for the rough bottom cast iron. I can't. Uh, can I smooth out the bottom without wrecking my pan? Um, maybe. Um, there. Um, if you are, uh, I please do not, do not, do not. Use a grinder or a wire brush on a vintage cast iron pan. I mean, that cast iron pan's been around for decades. It's gone through a lot and did not need to be uh, ground did not need to be ground down like that. With a modern day Asian made cast iron, you are pretty much free to do what you want, especially since the cast iron is usually pretty thick. And so there should not be a problem with that. So now and so if you want to grind it down, you can certainly do so. I mean, it's not like you're ever going to be able to uh, sell that Asian-made one on eBay. Here we go. Lay across some cheese. And then a bit more cheese. A little bit more cheese. Now, where did it go? Here it is. Bacon. 
pancakes. <laughs> Feel free. Help yourself. Yeah. Help yourself yeah. to the can pancake. Oh, it's delicious. The oh, cat. Wow. The cat took it. Oh, so good. Yeah, I like pancakes just like this. Blame the cats. I don't eat them with uh, syrup or anything. You know, just like oh, I believe it. Yeah. All right. Notice how quickly this thing has seized up here. On the other hand, as you can see, there's no difficult. Whoops. Okay, it did break a little bit, but that's because of my poor skills. And nonetheless, here we go. Definitely, as you can see, my poor omelet making skills are showing here. Nonetheless, it is still sliding around with no problem. However, so this is, well, almost an omelet. <laughs> what can I say? Yeah, I do try to go for the uh, double folded omelets, nonetheless, not the single fold, which I realize the single fold is easier, but well, it's how I like doing it. My bad. So now that we've done that, now I get to bring out the other spatula. I hope this is still may not fit right. Oh, hey, I think it's gonna work. Okay. Just barely. I'm ruining it. Ugh, this is my own fault. And there, okay, well. Close enough. Almost an omelet. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you very much. That was all the stuff to make on? Yeah. And I kind of, well, almost screwed up the omelet. That looks fine. Okay. Yeah, I know it's not perfect. I, I will I will, feel, I will fully admit that. <laughs> stove just needs a little leveling. There is that. Yeah, I have to take the time and level my stove at some point. Raymond, I've seized, I've seasoned all my vintage uh, cast iron with flaxseed. I don't, Eric doesn't like it. Yeah, no, I, I have to say I don't. But if you don't have any uh, problem with it, then uh, feel free to go ahead and use it. Again, I am not going to come down on you because it's your cast iron and you can do what you want with it. What number do you have the temperature on, friend? Uh, I have it right now, but uh, yes, probably may be up too high. Let me get a view of that. This is the Stargazer. Right now, I only have it on four or so. So maybe that might actually still be a little uh, too hot. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, we're probably already ready to take this thing out. Yeah. So... Okay. Well, here we go. Actually, for something. Oh, more pancake batter. Yes. Yeah. For something this size, like it or not, I've got to get out a different plate. Oh yeah, we have plenty of pancake batter. Okay. Well, no problem there. We can make them tonight or tomorrow or whenever. Okay. Now, I can't put this. No, I can't put this there. So, let's, let me turn this. Let me rotate this around a little bit because, hey, you can do that because it's not sticking. And now, boom. Hey, actually, that's not, not so bad. I, I will be the first to admit it's not perfect, and Gordon Ramsay would probably yell at me for that. You know what that pancake looks like? <laughs> All right, not pancake. Why did I say pancake? I meant omelet. Well, you get the idea. Okay, um, and so far so good. Now that we've done that, anyway, as I said, that is the Stargazer cast iron skillet, which again, we really don't have any problem here. Uh, I made uh, bacon in it and I made an omelet. So let's put that over to the side. And one last time, bring out the lodge once again and pretty much do the same thing we did with the um you know we are getting on in time here so i'd say we're doing pretty good here uh pretty much do the same thing we did here and that is bacon because you can't go wrong with bacon and then an omelet and there we go we'll we will have done eggs and pancakes and bacon. 
which only demonstrates what we really knew from the beginning. As I said, you can use a um, rough, so-called rough modern day cast iron pan with no problem at all. The real trick is the temperature control and the heat. And that was the PG version of Ramsey. Yeah, I know. What we might see, oh boy, I got this on my shirt. What we might see perhaps on Hell's Kitchen, for instance. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, I put six to 10 coats before I cook the bacon in them. If you aren't having problems, it must be something else. <laughs> Go on. Um, oh, I use Goyere on my omelet. Oh, that sounds good. Still, I mean, what can I say? This is our next dish here prepared in a so-called rough modern day cast, uh, lodge cast iron pan. And boy, this thing is definitely hot even up here. So we, we do need a uh, pot holder for this. Still, no problem at all. And in addition, again, we got to see the Stargazer in action and a uh, modern, no, and a uh, vintage BSR. So I'd say we're doing pretty good as far as smooth cast iron goes. And as I mentioned, there is some disadvantage to smooth cast iron in that you may have some trouble seasoning it. Um, of course, if you've got yourself a vintage Griswold, use it with pride. I mean, you know, I'm, I, if a few, Few years, why do I keep saying a few years ago? I'm surprised how fast the time passes. At a, now one of my best flea market finds was when I came across an, a late 1800s Griswold's Erie skillet. You know, Griswold's apostrophe S Erie. Those of you who know Griswold history will know that probably dates to like around the 1880s or so. That had possibly the smoothest surface on a cast iron pan I had ever felt. I think maybe the brand new Stargazer may have actually competed with it. But it was, oh man, was that thing ever smooth. I mean, it, as far as smoothness is concerned, that was really a prime example of what you could call glass smooth. So yeah, if you are fortunate enough to own something like that, use it with pride. And hey, notice, by the way, this bacon is not sticking at all. Not one bit. Of course, granted, I did use it as well for pancakes. So, uh, so actually, I should probably be a little biased here. I mean, that's uh, that stargazer again. I put in dry. I did not put it in dry in this one. So fair is fair. Nonetheless, even so, we're still not getting any sticking here. So definitely, once again, smooth does not mean. It is not non, no, I'm sorry, rough does not mean it is not non-stick. In fact, we're not having any trouble at all with this, are we? Once this is done, we will cook ourselves up another omelet, and I think we should be uh, all set here. Okay, I usually season well about once a year. Yeah, it depends on which one's needed, basically. <laughs> Lodge do get hot quick, yes. And that's one reason why I tend to, for, I personally tend to prefer the thick and heavy cast iron. I hope in 20 years I can still use these pans, but uh, you know, because at that point I'll be in my 70s. But nonetheless, un until that time, I'm very much enjoying using a thick and heavy cast iron pan, whether it's from Lodge or Stargazer or the Finex that uh, I have uh, still on the shelf, uh, or even the uh, Asian-made ones. Actually, I think, let me show one other thing. I'm to see if this will show up well on camera. Oops. That, namely, oh, I'll watch there. A Griswold uh, Dutch oven. Uh, the inside of this Dutch oven is also very, very smooth. It's also seasoned a lot, so it's not as clean as it could be. Uh, let me try putting it here. Here we go. So, yeah, Griswold even, even smoothed out and polished their uh, Dutch ovens. So they really, uh, you know, again, they really were the elite as far as cast iron was concerned. As opposed to, say, a modern-day Lodge Dutch oven, which definitely has a uh, surface that, as we said, has been uh, has been beaten down, uh, but it, it it still does have that Lodge rough surface. However, 
the other thing I've noticed, whenever any, whenever they talk about how you know you, how you need to smooth down your cast iron, they always, always talk about skillets. No one ever seems to be concerned about smoothing down the inside of a Dutch oven. Can be argued, well, you cook things differently in a Dutch oven, and there is a point to that. But you can use a Dutch oven as a, a skillet and fry things in it as well. Yet all they ever do, again, is talk about uh, skillets. <laughs> uh, you know, a couple of years ago, after Lodge released the uh, re-released its uh, cast iron bunt pan, an Asian maker also made a uh, cast iron bunt pan, which had that rough sandpaper-like surface. I've seen a few people uh, make nice bunt pans in that, and the uh, cakes still come make bunt pans, make uh, cakes in that uh, rough Asian-made cast iron, and the cakes still turn out just fine. And besides, if you're really into smoothing cast iron, I'd like to see you try smoothing out the insides of, of a bunt pan. All right. Um, black cat's rule, fill with grease and put it on the stove top. Bring the grease to the smoke point and then cool completely. Are you a mod in cast iron cooking? Uh, yes, I am actually one of the uh, mods of the uh, cast iron cooking group. So, uh, yeah, I've been uh, at that group since the beginning, and uh, <clears throat> I'm the one who's, I'm the person who started the group. <laughs> but uh, that's all I will say about that, because the uh, persons who are managing the group and doing the moderating on the group, really, they are the ones who deserve the lion's share of the credit on there for helping to keep things under control, keeping drama out of the group, and making sure that the group stays on topic. And when that, and since that group is now at about 376,000 members, that can be kind of difficult. Yeah, definitely we've got a hot spot here. So yeah, I am, I very much enjoy the Cast Iron Cooking Group, especially when you consider of all the thousands of people on there, the vast majority of all the cooking on there is pretty much everyday family cooking, family, friends, Occasionally special occasions, but mostly just everyday cooking. And that's one reason that's one of the things that makes that group so great. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you do with the grease after the skillet is cool? Store it for reuse? Definitely. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean I've got a uh, I've got a metal grease container that yeah, I found that as well at Savers. So I'm hoping it's vintage. Or if not, it was just made to look like a vintage, but either way. <laughs> there is a new group on Reddit called Cast Iron Baking. Oh, that sounds interesting. I'll have to look that up. So thank you again, Papa. My birthday coming up. Hint hint to son. I would like a skillet. Yeah, that would be ni a ni very nice present, uh, considering that they're really, well, depending on what he wants to spend on it. Here's a hint. Look, Go to Walmart's website and look up the Lodge Buffalo Nickel skillet. Very nice looking and not expensive at all. And you might want to hint to your son that that might be uh, something to consider. Not expensive and it looks really special. Not to mention the wildlife pans that are still there in the camping section at Walmart. <laughs> um, what else do we have? Uh, uh, like, li Lingua file 88. I got a new lodge not too long ago. Didn't even bother seasoning. Just a quick stovetop seasoning with some avocado oil and cooked bacon in it right after. Then it was ready to go. Definitely. <laughs> um, okay, well, I'm glad you're here, uh, Black, uh, Val's Black Cats. I'm glad everybody is here, really. I mean, it's, it's having all these people in this that makes this uh, live so much fun. <laughs> Very much enjoy it. <laughs> Uh, Termika S. I only have one cast iron pan a lodge, so I'm curious what happens here. Thanks for doing this. Well, you're welcome. What happens here? We have fun. That's what happens here. And I think this bacon is about ready to go. Or as I like to call it, I mean, if you notice at the uh, description of this group, I call it cooking magic. <laughs> and that's a subject I'm going to get into someday. Um, but for now... Nonetheless, I do still feel that's the best way to describe this group. And this is why I call my group cast my this channel Cast Iron Chaos and not just Cast Iron Cooking. Because this is my personal channel. Um, that's why a lot of it really caters to my um, 
tastes, I guess, or my or the subjects that I like, and not everybody agrees with it, and I don't agree with everything either, nor do I ever, nor do I plan for it to. This is my channel, and I can only say that I'm very, very much uh, flattered and thankful that people enjoy watching me have fun with that cast iron. <laughs> and having done that, we will one last time get ourselves an, an omelet going. And that's good because these are my last three eggs. <laughs> okay, let's move this over a little bit just so that you know people won't be bored with me being off screen. All right. Boom. Uh, yeah, I learned, whoops, yeah, almost. Oh, good, no shell. I learned from Alton Brown uh, that you never crack an egg on the side of the dish. You always crack it on the countertop, even though it makes a mess. Boy, these are crappy eggs. Um, because it can force little pieces of shell into it, and that makes it really hard to uh, manage. Which is why you always crack your egg on the countertop. But there we go. I managed to do that again with uh, with no shell getting into it. So once again, all we have to do now is sorry. I'll try to keep the uh, noise down as much as I can here. But anyway, as, as we saw, as I said, again, in that stargazer, well, granted, there's a lot of bacon grease, and there is a lot of bacon grease in this one as well, but um, it's really not that hard to make an omelet without sticking. And yeah, although I'm, I'm hardly one to talk, because for a long time, I could not do it. It just took a little bit of practice. There we go. Uh, yeah, and then after that, we will be all done because we're getting to time. But still, yeah, I mean, that way we will each have one. Right. If you want to have that omelet now, feel free. No, you. Okay. I don't want to try it, but you can't it. All right. No. And having done that, all right, let me just shake this grease around a little bit or move it around a little bit. Yeah, I'm making an omelet in bacon grease. Hell yeah. No for all that. And there we go. Oh, it's like you're frying it pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fried omelet. Yeah. I'm not denying that. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Nope. I got pizza left in here. But yeah, like you said, I have to level my stovetop. One side of it always cooks faster than the other, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, we've got to level it. We're almost ready for the cheese. I would say, yeah. Okay, then let's do it. Bam. <laughs> ah, he uses Grubhub. <laughs> do you deliver? Right? Yeah. You live in Worcester. <laughs> we can make that a possibility. <laughs> for a nominal fee, of course. Oh, of course. A lot more than Grubhub charges. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, there we go. We have cheese, and in addition to cheese, once again, we've got, uh, actually, let me get those tongs so I can lay it out. We have our bacon. Hmm. Bacon cheese omelet. Oh, oh we got to save a piece of bacon for her. Oh, you're right, you're right. Here, let me take this out. No, no, not a whole piece. She's a, she's a cat. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, there is that. Uh, <laughs> oh, so in case you guys are wondering what, why that is. Yeah. Our little princess, uh, Miss Mobley, um, doesn't like people food. But the one exception is bacon. <laughs> <laughs> On... I guess you have one type of food that you would eat. Bacon, I guess, is not a bad choice on that one. I gotta give her, you know, gotta give her credit for that. Yeah. Trouble, on the other hand, he is becoming a spoiled little a hole. Trouble likes shredded cheese. He does not like mozzarella. Mm -hmm. Well, happened again. Broke apart. Mm -hmm. Again, that's my fault. Usually do so well too. 
No, I think partly because. Well, you don't usually put bacon in them either. Yeah, that's true. You I, could have shredded up the bacon. Yeah, probably. probably sh I probably should have. Yes. Still, mm -hmm. still, nonetheless, right. it's not so bad. It tastes delicious. Look at my brown cheese. Mm -hmm. <gasps> <laughs> I'd rather have brown cheese than anything else. Let that bad boy with some brown cheese come out. Oh yeah. Yeah. You got it. Oh yeah. I, just, uh, I don't Here. got it. <laughs> no, this one kind of messed up. <laughs> oh, you know what? The skillet's not wide enough. Yeah. Here. Thank you. Uh, oh well. It still tastes good in the end. Yeah, and he, and, it's it's it, it skill was a little bit wider. You could have that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Next the time it's not quite wide enough because you couldn't slide that underneath well enough. Next time I'm gonna have to get out the number ten. And anyway, the whole point really is the non-stick because even though yeah, as I said, this was my entirely my fault. I definitely messed this up. No question there. I'll still eat it. But in this modern day rough lodge cast iron pan, as you can see, whoops, let me turn this off now. We have no difficulty at all moving it around. This is definitely a nonstick pan, oh, despite the fact. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she did. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's a uh, modern day lodge pan made for Cracker Barrel. Technically nothing special about that, although it has a nice uh, design on the bottom. And there is no problem at all with sticking. <laughs> So it goes. Oh, well, who else likes fried cheese? Next time, break up the bacon and fold it over only one side of the omelet. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I have done better than that. Uh, I've got a video, in fact, where I cooked an omelet in this very same lodge pan. Aw, she's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't let you less hold her. Mm -hmm. She's literally sitting in my arms eating a piece of bacon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Still, we are uh, just about done here. And anyway, hey, there's nothing wrong with this. I will still be able to eat this with no with no problem at all. <laughs> so let me get this out of the pan so it doesn't burn, and then we will uh, check the comments. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, the comments. I looked at the baby? comments, Ray. <laughs> the comments. Oh, the comments. Boy, am I going to be skewered for messing up this omelet. In fact, we've got all of this grease here. I may have I may have a little difficulty. Um, I think what we can do is first drain off a little bit of the grease carefully. Then I'll be able to get the omelet out. Use the tongs and the and the and the spatula. You'll be able to get it right out. Should be able to, but. First, let me drain off some of this carefully. There we go. Oh, well. Sorry, just saw the grease. Okay. Yeah. All right. Plop. There we go. More or less. <laughs> All right, now let's turn off the heat so that doesn't burn. And let's check the comments once again. So it goes. <laughs> I came across a six, seven inch cast iron pan marked 8W on the bottom with a large swirl in the metal in the inside. Uh, 8W, you probably have yourself a BSR Red Mountain, and that swirl might indeed be uh, the original factory grinding milling on it. So that sounds really good. I'd say, James Advilis, you, you got yourself a good, no, I'm wrong, fluffy otter one. You made a good score there. James Advilis, don't care how it's cooked or where it's cooked. It sure looks great. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, S. Brega, 1.5. I'm normally watch the next day. This was quite fun. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I really, I'm really, i really enjoying these live uh, videos here. Help yourself. That was one you messed up. Yeah. <laughs> brown cheese. Oh, yeah. <laughs> brown cheese. <laughs> but, no, I mean, as I said, having everybody here is really what makes this so much fun. And I really, really am glad for everybody who shows up here. That's the best quote. The exception is bacon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> great great to see breakfast. Breakfast for dinner is so good. Throw in some spinach or greens. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. My smoke detector management is annoying. Tell me about it. Yeah, I am surprised and thankful that that smoke detector did not go off tonight. 
Yeah. All right, what else? Uh, next time, break up the bacon and fold over only one side of the omelet. Yeah, well, as I said, that yeah, I fully admit that's my fault. You know, that French style, that's like triple folding. Yes, I, I do like trying it French style. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And as you can see, I am not a restaurant cook. Jamie's a restaurant cook. I think so. Your mama saved my fucking life. <laughs> Five minutes, guys, sorry. Yeah, your mama uses Teflon. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, I've been there, done that. It takes a while, but you will get the hang of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Andrew Bennett, I recently went from a gas stove to an electric, and I definitely prefer the open flame. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah, I know. It's like I am looking forward to the day when I will be able to uh, cook regularly and daily on a gas stove. <laughs> Hopefully this spring. Um, I got a new lodge. Oh, yeah, we said that part already. Okay. That's almost so good. I don't care. I don't care what you say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. You didn't hurt the taste of your supper. That is what counts. Definitely, that is what counts. As mom always used to say when I complain, it's all going in the same place. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the ugliest food is the tastiest. Oy. And, well, having said that, I guess we will uh, once again look to uh, wrap this up, folks. So, yeah, as I said initially... This was kind of like a clickbait title, you know, getting people here because of the so-called debate between rough and smooth cast iron. And as we've said, and as we know from the beginning, they are different. One is not better than the other. I mean, I love cooking in my modern day, heavy, thick, rough lodge cast iron. I love cooking in my glass smooth vintage uh, BSR. So it's all a lot of fun, and that's really what counts. It also matters, of course, what you can afford. That's also what counts. <laughs> so um, if there's anybody there, you can offer them something to eat. Okay, well, offer her something to eat. So, yeah, we're just wrapping up here, quite literally. And having said that, though, please feel free to post your comments because, you know, this is um, once this live is done, you will be free to argue in the comments section. And then uh, then we get to live up to uh, the reputation of YouTube comments. <laughs> but as I've said every time and I mean this every single time and I mean it more every week, really, this is a lot of fun because you folks show up and I can't thank you enough I'm very, very grateful that uh, that people do seem to enjoy this, despite my amateurish cooking. I mean, I am an amateur. I will be an amateur for the rest of my life. And uh, But what can I say, as I've said enough times, it's a lot of fun, and that's really what counts. And I hope that is uh, the reason why you are, well, you seem to be enjoying this. <laughs> Thank you once again, everybody, for showing up. And I actually managed to uh, get the uh, agenda for the next two weeks so I know what's going to be next week and what's going to be the week after that. What is going to be next week? And, oh, my God, I've forgotten. I wrote it on my Facebook, too, especially so that I wouldn't forget. In two weeks, though, uh, well, that's going to be the time for Cast Iron Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, yes, now I remember what next week's going to be. Dollar Store Cast Iron Cooking, where we look at another thing that people frown on, getting stuff from the dollar store, cooking with uh, utensils from the dollar store, and buying food at the dollar store. Because, you know, as we all know, these days, <laughs> for a lot of us, a dollar store is a lifesaver. Um, so that is uh, what we're going to see next week, and I very much hope I can see all of you and even more there. Looking forward to it, and uh, I do finally, I am going to have another uh, polished and edited video coming out, hopefully uh, by tomorrow. So uh, thank you once again for everybody, uh, Pop Hub, Dan, Hunky Savage, Eliza, uh, Solarzano, Bookworm73, and thank you very much everybody for showing up. So uh, once again, we will uh, see you all next week. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>